I am not a full-time game developer. Game development is hard, and something that can make it even harder is stressing about money while you're trying to make a game. Even though I'm at a point where I could probably sustain myself with game dev and YouTube, I chose to work a full-time software engineering job and do game development on the side. That way I can focus more on the longer term and focus less on profits. I can also do this novel thing called saving for the future. Towards the beginning of the year, my game Yannuck was shown to nearly a million people after winning the competition it was made for. I wanted to ride on that wave while continuing my day job. After slacking off for a bit since I was still acclimating to the working life after college and wrapping up some other projects, I set a hard deadline for Yannuck to be released by November 14th. It wasn't until mid-July that I got to serious work which left me with roughly 4 months to turn a game made in 3 weeks into a full game while juggling it with a job. I thought it would be fun to share how the scheduling monster has been working out for me. Yannuck is a twin stick shooter roguelite bullet hell where you fight cellular automata instead of typical enemies that walk around. The game design is absolutely critical for the timeline. Having cellular automata serves two purposes. First, it's quite fun to have to develop an intuition as to how the automata will react to being attacked in different places, which makes it more engaging than most enemies. But second, it moves large portions of the workload from artwork to code, which is my strong suit by far. In addition to that, the whole roguelite genre is typically more code heavy due to the common use of random generation and dependence on mechanics for content through replayability. My goal was to price Yannuck at $5 as a game you could get 8-10 to 10 hours of solid fun out of, while also being a game you could theoretically sink 100 hours into if you won a challenge. One of the biggest things that's making all of this feasible is the fact that my job is 32 hours per week, which is typically the minimum to qualify as full time and get benefits. It gives me an extra 8 hours per week relative to a normal 40 hour job, but that's not nearly enough on its own for the timeline I set. That means I have to use weekends and evenings like anyone else trying to make a game while working a full-time job. I typically stagger my hours, so some days I'll work 9 hours with an extra hour of commuting. The best trick I've found for staying productive is to focus on being productive when it's hardest. The amount of work isn't as important as the habit of squeezing in a little bit of work even if I only have an hour. Being productive in the easy times comes easier as a result. That means working on Yannick, especially on the days where I'm gone for 10 hours. I just woke up uh, a couple minutes ago at the crack of 8.30. Made my lunch, which took only a couple minutes because, uh, nuts. <laughs> and it's time to go to work. Alright, I just got home a few minutes ago. Uh, Heated up some who knows what that I made earlier this week and made myself a smoothie and I'll be eating and then maybe get to some work finally. I've just finished my second bowl of whatever that stuff is and I'm done eating. Uh, I'm feeling a bit sleepy though and normally I find that it's better to get the sleep so that when I'm working I can be working well. So I'm going to take a quick nap and then go on a walk since I've been sitting in the office all day. It is 8.55 and I finally got to sitting down at my computer to do some work. So I finished what I was planning on doing for today a bit faster than expected, so I went down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out what cellular automata I want to use for the winter area. Then I started learning about the different rule strings and how you can write them, and then I found out that there's a forum where people share their different rule strings and then like find patterns in each other's automata rule sets and uh, yeah there's some crazy stuff out there that I wasn't really aware of when I started working on Yannock. I'm not sure if I'll include something super novel in the final game. I might just leave that up for people modding the game and just playing with the shaders and stuff but we'll see. Anyways it is getting close to midnight so all I've got left to do today is probably just play some Beat Saber to get some exercise and then go to some sleep. Tomorrow is another 9 hour day and I do the exact same thing tomorrow. On my days off from my main job, I normally have social activities interspersed here and there. Typically I take things a bit slower while still being intentional with my time so that I can get some rest. Today's relaxing activity is watching the hurricane. 
Of course, there's plenty of hours in the day, so I still get the overwhelming majority of the work on Yannock done on my days off. Aside from the work hard when it's hardest attitude, there are a couple habits I've settled into that seem to be helping. Working a day job itself is a disruptive task, so I find that it's best to not try to work both before and after. Instead, I wake up, grab my lunch, get ready for work, and end up in the office all in the span of 30 minutes. That way, I have the largest possible block of time for continuous uninterrupted work afterwards. Rolling out of bed and into the office definitely doesn't seem to fit that productivity YouTube type of vibe, but it seems to work for me. I find exercise incredibly important for maintaining my sleep schedule and for not going insane from sitting at a desk for both my day job and game development. Sometimes it's biking, sometimes it's walking, and sometimes it's Beat Saber. One of the main habits I've developed is my task scheduling in Discord. Discord is convenient since it's on my phone and I'm already using it all the time anyways. It makes my tasks incredibly accessible and constantly in front of me. A task list doesn't need to be anything more than a text file anyways. Keeping a list of tasks means that whenever I sit down to work, there's no decision paralysis in determining what needs to be worked on. I just sit down and I work. The hardest part about getting work done is starting. So making starting easier is often very helpful. When I set Yonex's release date for November 14th, I broke down the development tasks for each month. Anything that was in the next 10 weeks or so would be broken down by the week, and I settled on breaking the weeks down into days within a roughly 2 week range, which is oddly similar to the standard sprint length in Agile. Another interesting thing I noticed was that I've tried to make a few bigger games in the past. Every single time that I've successfully finished a large project was a time that I set a deadline and scheduled tasks. This is definitely quite finicky when working around a normal job and other real life events. I just leave buffers and if something goes wrong, simply work harder because it's hard. The pace I've been keeping has been quite intense and I definitely can't keep this up for long, hence the 4 month timeline, but I've made some really good progress. Yannak now has a bunch of different areas that visually correspond with seasons and have their own automata rule sets. My favorite season is Void. You can now have Gary enchant your weapons which persist between runs as a form of meta progression. You can now fight, save, and partner up with NPCs in case you need a meat shield. Yannak now supports controllers as an input and runs on the Steam Deck. For some reason, the lazy footage of Yannak running on Steam Deck got way more likes than the teaser trailer on Twitter. The way that marketing works can sometimes be a bit annoying. I also added a buttload of settings and the four difficulty options to further improve replayability. The whole game has completely different music now too. There are also tons of new machine types that attack in different ways, and of course it wouldn't be a top-down shooter roguelite if I weren't adding more weapons and upgrades. There was a low-profile half-demo half-playtest I started in the Yannok Discord last week that's been going well, which leads well into the Steam demo I need for the Steam Next Fest in October. I've got 5 weeks of work scheduled for Yannok to wrap things up, plus a buffer week and a half before release, so I'm really in the final stretch here. Yannok is getting super close to 10,000 wishlists on Steam, so if it sounds interesting, I'd appreciate it if you'd wishlist it so you get notified on release. I've got to get back to work in the game dev minds now. Hopefully my random rambling here was interesting. Bye!